Hello, chess family. It's me, National Master Jesse James, and here we go. We're going to do five different openings to attack the French. Look for fun variations that will give you an advantage, and well, let's destroy the French. Here we go. The first one we're going to take a look at is the exchange variation of the Monte Carlo. This is one I suggest for a lot of my students because, well, who likes all the theory of the French defense? Not me. So one of the things I'll do with my students is give them this opening because it's very fast and easy to learn. Let's take a look. Here we go. We're going to start with e4, e6, d4, d5. And here, like I said, it's the exchange. So we simply trade the pawns. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And here it's very important and crucial that you do play pawn to c4 here. And this is going to be the Monte Carlo variation. And a lot of people will play this, but they will play something like knight c3 or maybe knight f3 without pushing the pawn to f3 here. If they do this, well, it will become an even position and it won't be as good for winning or as strong for winning. So c4, yes, this can give you an isolated pawn, but the winning chances are behind that. I'll be doing another video about the isolated pawn, so don't worry about that. Just know that most people are not even strong enough to take control of this. Uh, we'll see a quick game with this uh, opening, and I also want to show you where the pieces go. Again, very, very easy to put your pieces. Knight f6, knight c3, develop and put pressure on d5 pawn. Bishop b7, knight f3, castles, bishop d3, the best place for the bishop. They usually take here. That's okay. Just take back, and here you see all your pieces are looking very, very good now. Knight b to d7, pawn to h3. I like to throw this in. This is from one of my bullet games that I played against a 2500. And I like to play h3 here because bishop g4 can be a bit annoying. A lot of times what they're going to do is go knight bd7 with the idea of knight to b6. And the idea is to try to get control over the uh, d5 square because wherever the isolated pawn is, that's where the weak square is. So knight b6, bishop b3, uh, knight to d5, and castles here, simple chess. Pawn c6, you can see they're really trying to get control over this. With that being said, you have your own strong points here. Knight to e5, bishop to f5. Queen f3, I'm really liking the way my pieces are developed. Again, nothing really hard with these developing moves. Bishop g6, rook e1, bishop to d6, bishop g5, look at this. All my pieces are very, very active here. Queen c7, this was a bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a blunder, but it's definitely not the best move here. Putting your rook on opposite file, hopefully you know the move here, just rook ac1. Rook to e8, and here we just play knight takes and we're just winning a piece here. Bishop takes on e5, trying to complicate things. Here, I definitely should have played knight takes e7 first, but I played pawn takes instead. Knight takes, bishop takes, and here I just won a piece. Rook takes on e5, and here, bishop to f4. Here, my opponent did get a little creative here in play. Rook takes, rook takes with queen a5. All right, right to move. What do you play here to not lose the piece? All right, hopefully push pause. Here, you actually play queen to e2, or even queen e3. The idea being is you're threatening the back rank checkmate, and you're defending the rook. Obviously, with the queen going to a5, it was attacking the undefended rook and the undefended bishop. Here we've been a back ring checkmate, and black can go ahead and resign. He went ahead and did play h6 here and bishop b3. White went on to win. Let's go on to our next opening, and this one is the Milner Berry Gambit. I also have, a, I've, I've known it the, the Mulberry uh, Gambit. This is a very fun one that you can give away a pawn and get a very strong attack. It's been used at the very highest levels, and well, let's check it out. Here we go, e4, e6, d4, d5. We start off with the advanced variation, which is, which is going to be our last one that we'll be taking a look at today. e5 here, so it's called the advanced variation because, well, it's not that it's very, very hard to understand. It's just because we advance the pawn one square up, okay? Pawn c5, pawn c3, knight c6. Here we got this beautiful pawn structure right here. Knight f3. Bishop to d7, bishop to d3, and this is going to signify that we're going to be playing this mulberry gambit. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, we uh, queen to b6, here the bishop on d7 is stopping our typical tricks of bishop to b5. So with that being said, well, it's kind of hard to defend the pawn here. If you want to, you can say, you know what, I made a mistake and play bishop to e2. But I don't want to do that. Here I play with my bishop to d3 for a reason. I'm here to attack. And here, let's just go ahead and castle. And well, why wouldn't they take the pawn? Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. I like to play knight c3 here. Queen takes on e5 because why not? Here you're down two good pawns. With that being said, now you have plenty of attack and you should be getting another pawn here soon. Here rook to e1 and the queen is forced back to b8. Here, what do you play to win a pawn? Simple chess. Knight takes on d5 and you're up an extra pawn here. I'll go ahead and show you a few more moves of this game, but I mean, this is really one of the fundamental parts of this opening. If your opponent even knows this opening at all, they might just think that they're winning a pawn. At the higher levels, yes, they may know this. At the lower levels, this could be a brand new position for, uh, for them. Bishop to d6, queen to g4 here, not even bothering to defend this h2 pawn, and also putting pressure on g7. 
King f8, bishop d2, bishop c6, bishop c3, g7 idea, of course. And here, pawn to e5, knight to e3, h5, queen h3, knight to f6, rook to d1, e4, bishop c2. And I'll go ahead and stop it right there. If you do like this position, which I know I do like this as white, um, this is a very fun one. Like I said, you're giving up a pawn, but you should be getting a good attack. And like I said, you could either get one pawn given away or two pawns. All right, let's go on to the next one. Another favorite of mine, I play all these openings, is the wing gambit. What's the wing gambit? We're simply going to be giving away our B pawn to get a good attack on the king side. Again, this is from another one of my games. This time it was from a bullet game, and this one's against a 2400. So I went ahead and played e4, e6, knight f3, and this is the signature of the wing gambit. Here black is very happy and plays pawn d5 because they're thinking, uh-oh, they've already made a mistake. Here we play pawn to e5 here, and black's just like, okay. Pawn c5, and this is where the wing gamut comes from. We're going to get rid of the c pawn right here so that we can control the center with the d pawn. Here, if you play d4, not very good. Black just crumbles your center here, right? So here we go. Pawn to b4 here. I, I played this against the master, and the master ended up playing b6, and I got a very good position against him. He obviously did not know the best way to play. That being said, most people here are going to take that pawn. Well, good riddance. I don't want that pawn anyways. Pawn e3. B takes on e3. And here, knight takes on e3. Knight c6. Here, one of the ideas is knight to b5 here. And a lot of people can uh, can and will make this mistake. If you want to try another gambity kind of line, you can try this bishop takes on e3. And the idea here is after bishop takes, knight takes, here people will miss the idea and play a6 here. And well, it's just knight b5 and the knight gets a d6 with a very good game here for white. It's already plus one here for white here. And this one, we're taking a look at the idea where I play knight takes a3 instead. Knight c6, d4. Bishop to d7, c3. Look at this beautiful center here. I happily give away two pawns just to get this. a6, h4. Pawn h6, bishop d3. Look at this. We could definitely control the, the king side over here. Plenty of attacking chances here for white. Knight g2, e7. Black's having a hard time to develop. h5, pawn to b5. Of course, if black did try to play something like knight to f5 here, it's not going to take me long to play g4 because, well, I'm going to play this anyways. Pawn b5 got played. Knight c2. Knight to c8. Here you can see that black's trying to expand over here on the queen side, which makes sense as they do control more material over here. g4, knight b6, g5, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop to e7. Here white is just one on the king side. Already at this point, it's plus seven. The king, uh, the attack does not take uh, too much time over here. Queen g4 here, knight c4. Black has done very well to go on the queen side, but again, there's no good threats over here. So I'm just able to attack freely on the king side. Knight takes on f7, king takes on f7, queen g6 check, king back to f8. At this point, it's just forced checkmate. h6, rook to g8, h7, rook to h8, and rook to g1 here. There's just no good defense for the pawn here on g7. Bishop to f6, here you can simply just take, but here I found the best move, bishop to h6. Of course, if you take, well, then I get to just checkmate over here. There's a few different ways. You can simply just take the pawn, you can play queen to g8 check, so many winning moves here. In the game, after bishop h6, he went ahead and played queen e7. And after taking on f6, he just resigned. At this point, queen takes would just fall for it. Queen takes on f6 check, and they can't take back due to the pin. Like I said, very good at uh, attacking chances. All right, on to the next one. Here we're going for a more positional point and also a very good systematic way to play against it. This is uh, one of the openings that Bobby Fischer used to play, and this is one of his most famous wins using his king's Indian attack. Let's take a look. e4, e6. D3. Here it seems like a weird move, but the idea is to close the position and then gain space on the king side and then do a king side attack. So, pawn d5, knight d2, knight f6, g3. Here we're going to feed Keto our bishop. c5, bishop g2. Here you can see that's very standard ideas here for black. He's just going to be playing a standard setup. Here we'll go ahead and castle, castle. And now you're going to see white build up the king side attack starting with this one move pawn to e5 once you get e5 in well it kicks the knight away from its best defense on h7 and we're going to start building up more space here on the king side here we go knight went to d7 we're just defending the pawn over here pawn b5 black is in a rush he's uh, he's going to be going queen side in this game and of course we need to go king side so let's start getting some space let's start getting some pieces over there here knight to f1 b4 pawn to h4 a5 Bishop to f4, all the pieces are slowly starting to migrate over there to the king side, a4. And now a nice move here by 
Bobby Fischer. He goes ahead and plays a pawn to a3, and it ruins the systematic idea. This was given an X clan back in the day, and I, well, I'll give it, a, I'll give it one right now too. Pawn takes, pawn takes. The idea of, of black winning on the queen side is certain. The idea that uh, our king side attack, well, it's up in the air. Here we go. Knight a5, knight e3, bishop a6, bishop h3, d4, knight f1. A very nice move here. I think most people would play something like knight g4. But here, Fisher sees that knight d2, e4 is coming into the mix now. Knight b6, knight g5, knight to d5. Let's not lose our dark square bishop. Bishop takes, bishop takes. Queen d7, queen h5. Rook c8, knight d2, here comes that knight. Bishop to f6, x clam over here, and black plays queen e8. Of course, if you do try to play, well, it's just going to be a forced loss over here. It's really hard to control these uh, dark squares over here, so the king is just going to be lost. Queen e8 got played, knight e4, g6, queen to g5, knight takes, rook takes, c4. It looks like black is going to be able to try to create some counterplay on the queen side, but here, Fisher finds a beautiful force checkmate, h5. Pawn takes, rook h4, rook a7, bishop e4, pawn takes, and now queen h6 with the force checkmate. Feel free to push pawns if you want to, see if you can figure this one out. All right, I will go give you one more move here. Queen f8 has to get played here to stop the g7 checkmate. So what do you play here? All right, hopefully you see it. Here it is force checkmate with queen takes on h7 check. Force move here, king takes. Pawn takes on g6, double check by the rook and the pawn. Here, the king has nothing better than to just go ahead and take. And then, of course, here, the checkmate in one, the bishop to e4 for check and mate. A beautiful uh, win in inspiring so many people to take up the king's Indian attack against the French defense. Our, our last one, just a good positional way to play, is just play the advanced variation. It's one of the simplest and one of the strongest. So I recommend it. You get very good attacking chances and you just get extra space so why wouldn't you do this move here we go e4 e6 d4 d5 pawn to e5 the advanced variation c5 c3 pawn takes pawn takes bishop to b4 check not a very good move here typically going to keep this guy inside knight c3 knight c6 knight f3 knight g2 e7 again not the best way to play here and uh, bishop to d3 gets played, castles, and well, it's white to move and win. Here, this whole setup, like I said, was just a bad idea. So what do you play here? It's white to move and win? I'll give you a hint. It is the Greek gift. Here, this is why it's so important to put the bishop here. And it is a well-known fact, castling kingside, especially when you're playing the French, can be devastating for you. So here we go. Bishop takes h7, check, king takes, knight g5, check, king g6. All other variations are just lost over here. So the king has to venture out the g6 only square. And here, h4 got played. Top move by computer, h5, check. If the king ever goes to h6, knight takes f7, double check because of discovery for the bishop. And here, knight takes on g4, desperation, desperation. Not much here to do. Queen to g4, not even accepting the sacrifice. If you want to go check me over here and win a rook, you're more than welcome to. You can take a rook. I'll take the, the king. Pawn f5 got played. And here, it's just forced checkmate in three. Feel free to push pause if you want to to figure this one out. All right, hopefully you push pause. Forced checkmate in three, like I said. h5 check. King to h6. Double check here. Knight takes e6. Double check, as I mentioned earlier about this tactic. Pawn to g5. And now, well, checkmate in one here. You can get lazy. You can play queen takes g5. I won't, I won't say anything about it. But here the beautiful checkmate in one. We got en passant here for mate. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. What do you think about this? Did I miss any opening, uh, any other openings that can crush the French? I was trying to look for more aggressive options just because I know people like to attack. And I do too. I have like seven different openings I do play against the French. I just gave the ones that I thought were going to be really good for attacking. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy your day. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>